I had this conversation with my brother yesterday. Um, huh. So my brother, um, uh, you know, as you guys maybe don't know, um, my family lives in Southern California. They still do. Um, my brother growing up was uh, a really good tennis player. Like he went to like the Nick Bulletary Tennis Academy um, out in Florida. He was like, you know, played doubles with Pete Sampras. He was a really good tennis player. And then he got to high school. And my brother told him only loser, <laughs> only wimps play tennis. So he started playing football. So uh, <laughs> as a so he's you know in his late or mid forties, late forties. He's older than me. Um, he uh, one of his buddies or no? So his wife was like, uh, I want to take some tennis lessons during COVID. So like they were having like some COVID stuff. He'd go take tennis lessons. She's like, you know, uh, uh, his daughter started playing tennis, you know, at, at like the local junior high school. And so uh, Carrie, who's my sister-in-law, was like, you know, I, I want to take tennis lessons. So she went over, took tennis. And so my brother's like, oh, I used to play tennis. So he comes over and he's like, I'll take a lesson with you. So he goes out there and like he, you know, like just picks up, you know, rents some racket. And like the pro goes out there and he's like, oh, did you ever play? He's like, yeah, I used to play a lot when I was a kid, like 30 years ago. And... um they go out there and he's like, oh, let's hit around. So my brother like basically serves and aces the dude. Like the tennis pro was like, Jesus, that was like a 90 mile an hour serve. And he's like, yeah, I haven't played in 30. He's like, when was the last time you played? He's like, like 30 years ago. He's like, how good were you? He's like, I was pretty decent. And uh, so now my brother plays like three days a week and he's like the Orange County, like as one, like basically goes and wins all these tournaments. And he's like, so he was calling me. To he's like, now giving the pro lessons. Oh, dude, he's killing people. <laughs> Like he, he, he was such a good athlete, like growing up, like he could do anything better. Um, like he like finished playing football and he played division three football and then like walked on and, uh, started was a starting catcher and like, you know, hit, I think third or fourth, um, in baseball, you know, and, uh, just so like his senior year. Yeah. Just, just decided, out of spring. Yeah. He, he was like, yeah, just went out. I and, mean, he only got four years and he was you know, and like went out and started in baseball. So, I mean, he's always been really good athlete, everything he's done, but I just think it's hilarious. He's like, you know, it's a lot of muscle memory. And, uh, he just goes out there and he's like, I've been winning all these tournaments. He goes, it's great. He's like, you know, it's not as competitive. Like I don't get to hit anybody, but he goes, it, it scratched that competitive itch. And it's something that, um, I, I like had this weird kind of existential moment the other night at like 3 AM when I woke up and, you know, kind of hit myself with like, what are we doing here in life? kind of moment I'm sure that hits everybody every father everybody who's ever you know fucking worked a job and you know been out there in the grind and uh the one thing that was has been missing from my life and um I was going in boxing a couple days a week and then I had shoulder surgery so I haven't gotten back to doing it um and Todd White's been hitting me up about going and doing jujitsu and then we were out there watching like the archery thing for that archery challenge mm -hmm. and I realized that I go bang weights uh, you know, we do podcasts. I mean, we write programming, you know, we have a, a coaches network that we're, you know, uh, doing a bunch of stuff with remote coaching and, you know, there's just a million different projects for here, developing content. Um, you know, all the stuff that, that I'm doing on the back end, building a, yeah, building a studio. new podcast studio. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that Luke was doing ended up kind of falling onto my plate. So, uh, you know, the one thing, you know, and then obviously all my free time is either welding and working on the trucks in the shop or, you know, kids sports and other stuff. And I realized the one thing that I'm not doing is I'm not using my training in a specific way anymore. I'm just going in there and banging weights and testing programs. And I realized that like a little piece of me has died because one, um, the only thing I really ever enjoyed in this world was, uh, fucking beating people's asses. I really enjoyed playing football, strapping up a helmet, running out of the tunnel and basically trying to wear some dude out for three hours a day. A master of violence. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it, it's, it's what woke me up every day. It's what kicked me in the pants at 5 AM to get out and go train it. Uh, you know, uh, at night when I was eating my last meal, what it's the, you know, the little voice in my head that said, go to bed, you need eight hours of sleep because you have to be better. Somebody else is out there training harder than you. And, uh, that was my whole life. I mean, from the time I was 14 years old until I was in my, my mid thirties. Um, and you know, since now all of a sudden, like that's kind of changed and like searching for ways to like still have that competitive edge and, uh, or at least that competitive desire. And it was funny as I was talking to my brother yesterday, he's like, it's pretty good. I've met a whole new group of guys. It's really fun. I get to go out there and, and do them. I'm like, is it as good as hitting people? And he's like, no, he's like, there'll never be anything to report. And I'm like, you know, um, and then it was ironically, um, you know, my 69 Camaro that I sold to Todd White like 14 years ago, uh, you know, has come back to me 
because I, I got to clean it up and fix some stuff on it because we're going to try to push it back out into the world because I think Todd's done with it. He's got like six kids. He's got no room for a Camaro, uh, badass 69 Camaro. So I've been working on it and it's, it's, uh, it's funny. I was talking to him yesterday. He's like, how come you haven't come to jiu-jitsu? And so I used to roll in the off season, um, you know, with some guys in Orange County, like uh, Joker and Eric Apple and those dudes. And, you know, did it when I was, you know, younger, training with Nono and all those Gracie dudes. And uh, it was something I really enjoyed and like that physicality and that like training for something and preparing, you know, and it's like the age old fight club. Fight club's a reason you trim your nails, you cut your hair, uh, you know, you make sure you get all your training in so that you are able to translate it. And I had this just interesting existential 3 a.m. moment where I'm just laying there. I don't know if it's existential or reflective or just this like moment Itch. of this moment of clarity when I realized like violence is important. Like you have to have that outlet, you know, competition, sit, competition. well, competition, I think. But what's important about competition is like the preparation piece. Like, mm -hmm. like, like I think people want to compete, but for me, like I need something to compete in so that the preparation has meaning. Like I need a direction. Like, Hey, if this is what my goal is, like if you said, Hey John, um, you know, like if you want to go be a, a you know, serious jujitsu player and you want to be good, like you're going to have to be this and do this and this, then it gives you a, a blueprint to work from and you start training for it. So I think a lot of that comes down to just assessing those goals. And I think all too often, we just get stuck in the daily grind. We get stuck in our lives. And, um, you know, like recording this podcast, what I, I wasn't originally a huge fan of the idea of doing a podcast, uh, just cause I was like, what the fuck are we going to talk about? And here we are years later and we're still talking about it. And I think having uh, passion and like, you know, learning and having people on where you're like, fuck man, that was really good. That's going to force me to go do a bunch of reading for the next three hours. Like, um, and just having some more diversity is important. But I think at the end of the day, there's something primal about putting yourself, you know, being the man in the arena, you know, putting yourself out there and, you know, potentially, you know, being a white belt. I wrote an entire blog post, always be a white belt. And I realized that, uh, all of a sudden, you know, like my white belt, like I've been, you being the white belt in other ways, whether it was welding and fabricating or doing all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, like you need that physical outlet. You probably just need a dude to choke you out every on occasion, or at least catch a punch in the face. And, uh, Man, that is so good for the soul. That's like chicken soup for the soul. No way, I'm going back. I'm a loaded freight train and I'm riding.